So the EA288, the two liter TDI diesel takes over from the EA189, which let's face it, was dogged with problems. The Volkswagen Group had done their best to improve things over the years. So the question is, how much better is the EA288? We're not gonna go quite as far as the 2018 revision of this engine, which is referred to as the Evo, which again was a major leap forward. In terms of Volkswagen diesel engines, the EA288 is a considerably better engine than its forerunners. So in this video, we're just going to highlight some of the common things that crop up. Now, don't think of these as significant faults. The previous engines, the older you went, you seem to have more and more problems and issues creeping up. So some of these problems only really manifest themselves when you get up to 150,000, 200,000 miles. So for most drivers, they would consider these as reliable engines with no problems whatsoever. But at this point in time, you may well be buying one that's got a higher mileage. So this video really serves as highlighting the things you need to look out for when you're looking to buy one of these amazing 2-litre TDI engines. It's fair to say that Volkswagen have had a few issues over the years with their 2-litre TDI engines, as have many other manufacturers. Now, Volkswagen often push the envelope. They're innovators when it comes to designing engines and trying out new technology. So they're often first to the market or they mass produce engines that other car manufacturers are still developing in the background. So it's nice to have this technology coming out so quickly, but often there are problems that manifest themselves as the engines start to get older. So thankfully, they've looked back at the common problems that happened with the older engines and they've engineered out a lot of these faults and issues on the EA288. So there's just a few things that I want to flag up as things to look out for potential problems. Now firstly the EA288 like all diesel engines has a DPF, a diesel particulate filter. If you do short journeys you don't warm it up and you don't go through the proper heat generation cycles you will get a problem with that. That's a fact of life of having a diesel particulate filter on an engine. So the design of the diesel particulate filters, the positioning in this is significantly better in the previous engine. So it's not dogged with as much of a bad reputation as its forerunners, but it does require you to be aware that you've got a DPF filter and adjust your driving style accordingly. The previous engines were dogged in the diesel gate emissions scandal where Volkswagen cheated the emissions regulations with a software defeat that detected test conditions and backed everything off so the car would meet emissions. So there's allegations against again against the early versions of the EA288 engine still forming part of this emissions scandal. So it'll be interesting to see how the courts deal with this and how Volkswagen handle these particular allegations. You can't assume that this EA288 is completely free of those diesel allegations because there are still some rumours and some pending investigations going on out there. So if you've got some updates on that, please let us know in the comments how that's gone. So having direct injection and just the way the engine works, it's got an EGR valve and there's a positive crankcase ventilation system. All of these add up to the possibility of having carbon building up on the intake. So most people will just consider this as a, a routine thing now. You tend to accept that this will happen on modern engines and just get a clean done on the intake every 50,000 to 70,000 miles. So that's really part of routine maintenance. Changing your spark plugs in a gasoline or petrol engine is not really considered a problem or a fault. It's just something you have to do. So people are starting to feel the same way about the carbon buildup problems. Now the carbon buildup up speed is much reduced on these EA288 engines. We're doing another video that's going to be out soon that's just discussing some of the revisions that Volkswagen have made to improve this problem. But I can't dogmatically say that the EA288 will have no intake problems because it's direct injection and it's got all those pollution control systems. So there is going to be a risk of having carbon building up on those intake, but it's much slower, it's much improved, and Volkswagen have done a pretty good job in mitigating this issue. As the mileage starts to creep up, you're starting to see problems with the fuel injectors. Now, bear in mind that these injectors are working under really high pressures. This is a modern turbo diesel engine. It's been designed to meet modern emissions regulations. It gives a phenomenal amount of performance to you as a driver. So those injectors are working pretty hard. So these aren't the phase 
failures that just happen randomly at low mileages. As the injectors start to age, they will start to deteriorate. So injector replacement is quite expensive. Some firms are offering replacements and reconditioned units. There's also a whole host of aftermarket options that you can go for if you wanted to upgrade the fuel injectors. So that's probably something worth thinking about if you've got a tuning project and you want to get a little bit more performance out of your engine. But keep an eye on the injectors. If you're starting to have power problems or power issues and the mileage is creeping up, it could well be those old injectors just starting to fail and starting to play up. So get those investigated and checked out. So these engines use a fairly complex cooling system. The, the variable flow water pump is often subject to failure. Again, this isn't something that just happens randomly on low mileages. So we're not talking about an inherent defect here, but these water pumps can fail at higher mileages. So things to look out for on the water pumps is abnormal noises, vibrations, anything that would indicate maybe there's friction going on inside the water pump and random coolant temperature drops or peaks and a car not warming up properly or a car not cooling down when it's being run particularly hot. So get a feel for how the baseline is on these engines. And if you notice anything out of the norm, get the water pump investigated. That's most likely going to be the area where you start to see problems developing. So the exhaust gas recirculation system is again fairly complex in the EA288. They've done it to meet the emissions regulations. Um, it generally only really kicks in at low RPMs during the warm-up phases. At high RPM driving under full load, the EGR system is pretty much shut off. So it's not something that's going to impact your performance adversely, but it is circulating those exhaust gases. It goes through a cooler before it goes into the intake. And it's actually in that cooler where you start to see it clogging up and blocking up. So again, keep an eye on that. If you have a high mileage version of this engine, get the EGR cooler system stripped down and cleaned out if you suspect there's a problem going on in this area. You may well start to have rough running problems. The emissions may start to creep up. There may be warning lights coming on the dashboard and you may be throwing error code. Each of those things could indicate that it's the EGR cooler that's starting to play up. So turbos on these engines are pretty good. Most people we speak to say they last to about 150,000 miles, which is reasonably good in a modern engine. And at that sort of mileage, you may well start to think about upgrading it, replacing it with a better unit and turning this car into a project car where you renew it as much as you can, but you do it to a much higher performance level just to take that to the next level. And the dual mass flywheel, like any dual mass flywheel, is taking a lot of stress and vibration out of the engine. There's two plates, there's a spring mechanism connecting those two plates together, and it does take its toll. Again, this is something that tends to affect the engines well over 150,000 miles. People have said to us about 200, 220,000 miles, you start to get DMF failure. So if you notice noises coming from the transmission, rough running, that could all be a sign that the DMF is starting to break apart or starting to fail. So get that addressed early on. If, it, if you leave it too long, you can start to run up some pretty serious repair bills and have other problems developing in the car. So, so I hope this video has given you a really nice overview of the EA288. It's a great engine. There's a few things to look out for, but in this case, I can, I'm grateful that it only really applies as the mileage starts creeping up. And it's things that you would generally see on most engines now. So it's a great engine to buy. It's a great engine if you're thinking about getting one as a project, because there's a lot you can do to it and we're going to cover that in another video coming up. So please subscribe to make sure you don't miss out. We would love you to stay tuned to the channel. And if you haven't booted the like button, please do so because that helps us to get out there. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching.